Welcome back to the Top Dogs Podcast. In today's episode, we tackle the crucial topic of boundaries and relationships. We explore the importance of setting boundaries, how to establish them, and the complexities of handling situations when boundaries are crossed. Join us for an insightful discussion on forgiveness, admiration for unique boundaries, and personal experiences in navigating this delicate balance in relationships. From the first boundaries set to the most recent, we share stories and advices on this journey of self-discovery. I am Mumu. I'm Stream Arkadad. I'm Whiplash Wolf. And I'm Zembos. Okay, uh, just before we start Today. with the episode, Whiplash, I can hear some feedback of your audio through your headphones. Oh, is it just, it's probably just this, give me one second. Ooh. Just lower your volume a little bit, should be fine. All right, so going on to talking about boundaries and everything, I want to talk first about setting them. Do you think setting boundaries helps maintain healthy relationships? And do you think it, like, furthers your relationships with others? Would you like to start, Stream? Of course. So I think boundaries is probably one of the most rela- the most important thing aspect of a relationship. It's really important that you communicate with your partner and know is exactly where your boundaries are so you avoid unnecessary fights and arguments and being hurt in the process as well. It's bad. Boundaries can vary intensity as well. They can have different repercussions. So I think like being as honest as possible and being open to your partner, of course, is really important. Uh, we have a lot of different boundaries and sometimes some are harder to voice due to previous trauma or difficult past. And some are more obvious to set up, you know. So I think just being open with your partner, being open minded to listening to your partner, I think it's two really important things what do you think Whiplash? I'd have to agree with you because when it comes to boundaries there are going to be certain aspects that you are not comfortable with especially like you said if it comes to trauma like past trauma or possibly things you have learned through relationships of the past and that you don't want to deal with that anymore or something that just makes you not be like you want it anymore and you want to be more comfortable with your partner but no i completely agree with you honestly like it just you have to set the boundary between you and your partner so you have a more comfortable relationship and i would say between friends too because there's always going to be just that if you go too far in the friendship it can usually end bad sometimes most definitely i definitely have to agree that setting a boundary is one way to keep a healthy healthy relationship between either your mate or your friend because you're literally drawing that line saying, hey, this is here, don't cross this. That way no one gets hurt, whether it's mentally, emotionally, or even financially when you step over that boundary. So it is definitely a healthy way to maintain healthy relationships with other people. I also believe that boundaries don't have to be set between, you know, your partner or your life partner, your fiance, your husband, your loved one, but also with your friend, but also with your work colleagues, you know, your boss as well. When you start working, sometimes it's good to, if you get more personal with them, I think it's good. If you get to that point, I think it's good to tell them like what your boundaries, what your capabilities are. And even with your friends and family, you know, the, your family, I think it's, it's good for them to know that you, there's some limits that they cannot cross or otherwise it's going to give, you know, it's going to create problems and nobody wants problems for the most part. So yeah, it's just, I think it's, it's good to voice them. I think a lot of people don't communicate enough how they feel, what their limits are. And I think it's the most important thing in any sort of relationship you have with somebody else. That being said... How do you go about setting your own boundaries? I think just taking the time to say to I, I, me, the way I do it the most often, it would be with my husband. So I would be, hey, look, things are happening right now. I've noticed you did this or this happen. And honestly, 
I cannot deal with this. It either frustrates me or it hurts me or it makes me very impatient. So if you would be so kind to maybe try to figure a solution or try to find an alternative to acting a certain way or taking certain decisions or doing certain things. And all this stuff can be easily resolved if everybody keeps an open mind. And when you speak, very important you talk to the I feel this way. I would like this. I would like that. Never accuse the other person because they're less likely to be receptive to what you're asking from them. Always talk about how you feel concerning certain things. And for the most part, usually the conversation will end up going pretty well. And both of you are going to be able to communicate and figure out a, a solution for this situation. And maybe find a middle ground because sometimes it's not always clear. It's not always black or white, you know. So find that middle zone is really important. I would say establish your comfort zones. Because as we stated before that we set boundaries just in case it leads to past traumas and such. So as I will go about it, I will say to someone, hey, I am not comfortable with this or being involved with this. Like say, if I'm involved with a horror game or something like that, I can't deal with horror. So I would say, hey, hey, do not bring me to a place that has that kind of element because I can't handle that. I will say it verbally, I'll make sure I am thorough with my communication because we can deal with people that have, you know, a sense that will look for a loophole before while you're saying this. They always have an excuse saying, oh, but this and that and so forth. So I would say I would be very, very thorough of setting my boundary. What about you, Whiplash? I mean, the main point is just to, if, I'll uh, say, okay, let's say it was come to friendship. Let's say someone, someone you're really close with does something kind of behind your back. Now let's say like they're talking bad about you, but they did something that you didn't really agree with and you kind of want to set that boundary with them just so like you both are on the same page together we know how it is trying to um, keep good friendships going on you don't want to lose them and you have to like make agreements where you can actually like, be able to continue that friendship along the way so we don't just split apart like moses did <laughs> i mean i can agree with you both though you both have good statements going on well, you talked about overstepping boundaries a little bit. What do you do when people overstep them? Zembos, would you like to start? Sure. When, com when someone oversteps my boundary, I don't say it directly to them right then and there, just in case there's people around, but I will bring them to the side saying, hey, that wasn't cool. I don't like that. Because I drew that line for a reason. And since you overstepped it, we got... I don't know, I have to find a solution to help fix that. Because if it's someone I really care about, like a friend, then I have to assess saying, okay, do they know about this? I hit my mic. Do they know about this boundary? Do they... <laughs> <laughs> I, I heard it. Felt it. Like it. Bonk, <laughs> <laughs> do they know about this boundary? If so, then we definitely need to talk about it. Because if it was an accident, like, okay, they didn't know about it. But they do know about it. I would definitely pull them to the side or even text them saying, hey, man, that wasn't cool. Do you think you can not do that again? That way there won't be a future issue. So I I would pull them to the side and talk to them about the boundary they overstep. Stream? Yeah, I think it's it's important to let people know that your boundaries are have been crossed. But I think the best part is to warn people that they're about to cross a boundary. And sometimes you don't, some people don't get the message on the first warning. I tend to be like that. I tend to overstep boundaries, but it's never done out of malice. It's just me being a bit, you know, goofy and a bit very clumsy, I would say, verbally clumsy sometimes. So I try right. to be compliant with like I try to be like forgiving when people do it to me because I know that sometimes I am guilty of overstepping boundaries. So that's why I try to be as clear as possible. I'm like, hey man, you're about to hit a boundary right there. Just, just avoid doing that and we're gonna be good. And if people have step boundaries and sometimes you don't even know like that was gonna happen. Like you can't plan for everything. 
So it's me. I use a lot of logic and my emotion. Um, I try to think like, look, he probably didn't know about it. He wasn't aware. I'm gonna be calm, compose myself. I'm gonna, if, if I need to, I'm gonna remove myself from the situation just to calm down a little bit, go forward to the person and try to be respectful through the process because they didn't know. It's not written on our heads, like what our boundaries are. That's what happens with friendship is the more you get to know a person, the more you discover and find out about their boundaries and then you're gonna respect them. So I think it's really important to try to be self-aware, be conscious early of the signs. Some people are able to communicate better than others. That's why I try to do it as much as possible. And I try to be forgiven when that person has never been received a warning or anything like that. So I try to calm myself down and not jump at the person's throat saying like, this is just like, this, I don't like what you did this. This is shameful. You should, you know, I try to stay cool about it, but it's pretty rare. I don't tend to get offended easily. I think, well, at least I don't think so. I get offended easily, but when it does happen, I let the person know and I kind of try to laugh it off too. It always goes better. <laughs> what do you think, Whiplash? Hmm. To be fair, I'm kind of like you, especially with my boundaries. My boundaries are kind of like very spread apart. So like if you step over boundaries, you did something very bad because like my boundaries are just like way out there. But I usually don't point fingers if someone does because to be fair, most people that you're friends with may not know your boundaries. Maybe you're not very vocal about what your boundaries are. So if they step over them then it's more than likely just an accident. So you just maybe don't, not even like take them to the side. Maybe just call them later, maybe message them later and just ask them like, hey, did you know about this with me by chance? And then if they didn't know, then just discuss it with them and possibly more than likely you guys will just work it out. Because obviously most times when it's boundary stepping, it's more than likely an accident. Unless, say, you're at a furry, you're a furry party at a fur con, then boundaries are just <laughs> stepped over like crazy. Because that's just how that happens. <laughs> yeah. I mean, most of the yeah, time it's that... just a big misunderstanding and it's just a little lack of communication. It's not a big deal. I think where it becomes a problem is when the person keeps doing it and doing it and doing it again. And then at this point, I'm like, okay, I think you need to get out of my life. <laughs> I'm yeah, sorry, go ahead. Exactly. The repeat. Uh, no, I'm going to make a joke saying, like, like, like you're playing hopscotch or something, just keep hopping over that. Well, <laughs> stop it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> how, how many times? How many times does a person have to hop over those boundaries for you to cut them off? Would you like to start with that? Oh, that is a definitely a good question. I would say it depends how severe the boundary they overstep, but I will definitely try to forgive them because life's way too short to just hold grudges and all that i'm trying to learn that i'm close to my 30s so i have to learn that or else i'm gonna be a bitter old man but i will have to say about <laughs> it's definitely more than three chances because three strikes you're out is usually not guaranteed so i'll probably have to give like five in a leniency i don't want to give too many chances because well mm -hmm. I hit my mic again, dang. I don't give too many chances because people tend to take advantage of that. People tend to take advantage of that. If, you, if they notice you give them a lot of chances, they'll see how far they can go before, you know, you just cut them off completely. So definitely five chances for me. Stream, what about you? Well, I'm going to give it to Whiplash. I think he was really excited to answer this one. Oh, I'm well, sorry. I was going to say what <laughs> this one kind of said earlier. I kind of give him the three strikes or out kind of thing. Because just like what he said towards the end is if you continue to just give people chances, especially if it's stepping over boundaries, depending on the boundaries it is, and if it's severe, like he said, is like why would you give them the chance to continue stepping over that boundary? Because then they're just going to take advantage of you and just continue doing it because... They know they can do it because you'll forgive them in the end because you're someone who doesn't hold a grudge. Unlike me, I will hold a grudge, especially if you do three chances. If you do three chances, then <laughs> fuck off. You're done. That's just the way it is with me. Get out of here. <laughs> you're done. You're done. So with too much crap. That's right. You're out. <laughs> mm -hmm. What about you, stream? Oh, man. I'm a bit like you, Zembos. Honestly, I tend to give multiple chances. I give multiple warnings. But usually when I'm about to reach my final one, it is very clear. And I'm like, dude, this is the last time I'm warning you. 
So if you see me like getting angry at you, don't ask me why, okay? Because like I'm done. I'm done. Like it, it's crazy. Like usually most people, what I see is usually one or two chances, and then the third one is pretty. You no, know, three strikes, you're out. Like you said, Whiplash. This is what I see for the most part. I tend to give a lot of chances. I tend to reset my counters sometimes. I had somebody on my Discord that was interrupting me all the time. And at one point, I I was hitting my boundaries. I told him to stop interrupting me. And then he interrupted. I tried to say something. He interrupted. He tried to say. And then he interrupted me three times in a row after I'd just given him a warning. I was like, that's it. That's it. Um, I like He was in a voice call with Kit. <laughs> and I put him in timeout for 24 hours. <laughs> He's like, I'm sorry. I overset my boundaries. I will work on that. I'm so sorry. And then he's been fine ever since then. And it's been cool. And you know, once, usually when, if, like, once the boundary has been crossed, I'm open minded to discussion. I really don't like holding grudges. I think it's pointless. Like you said, life's too short. You got to make the most out of it. And I hate holding back grudges. And I'm always open minded to discussion, trying to figure out what happened, how we can improve onto this. And this is why I don't block people. I don't ever block people on like VR chat, Discord, or Telegram. If I have blocked you, there is a solid, massive reason, and it's called harassment. Otherwise, even though I don't like you for some reason, I will unfriend you, but I will not cut the communication channel because I believe everybody's allowed to express themselves and try to figure out a solution. And honestly, I find that really irritating when I try to make it up to somebody when sometimes I'm not even responsible of the situation. I just want things to get better and they completely cut me off because they have their own perception of the thing and they don't even know what's my side of the story. So I try to keep an open mind as much as possible. Well, mm. going off what you already kind of answered because <laughs> <laughs> you kind of already answered the next question. Has there ever been a time where you seriously had to cut someone off? Whiplash, would you like to start? Ooh. Where do I begin on this one? <laughs> I would say quite a few times, more than likely. Maybe more like, uh, not really like someone, what would you consider harassment? I have people like, continuously try to role play with me, even after I tell them to stop. That stuff is whatever, that stuff I used to do when I was younger, because let's be honest, we all were horny as kids, like horny teenagers. But Horrible. there's just some, it's just some times where you just kind of want to just have a decent conversation with someone. Or maybe someone is harassing you about some stupid BS online or stuff like that. And you're just not wanting to deal with that stuff. And you just give them, keep giving them warnings after warnings after warnings. And then like, look, this is your final one. Keep continuing with this crap. And then I'm just going to immediately block you because, like, no one needs that. <laughs> no one needs that stuff in their life. I'm not like you. Keep that to yourself. Help me. <laughs> yes, you. Yes, you. Guys. <laughs> it's your turn. Definitely a few instances where I had to cut someone off. Luckily, none is in the real life world, but there are some how to do it virtually like there was this one dude he was in the telegram group i was admin for but the problem was he would text me every single day for some odd reason when there's 100 people in that group chat 20 of them being active so for some reason he wants my attention all the time so i'm like okay cool blah blah, blah. and for some reason he forced me even though he says he's straight which is the confusing part so anywho after a while, I started getting shorter with my texts after I say, hey, look, I, I hit the mic again. I need it. <laughs> <laughs> you have to figure out your setup. Hey, we're, we're, we're doing something new to, today, so we're, we're adjusting. Don't worry about it. But yeah, I got shorter with my texts to show them that, hey, I'm a little busy. I need some time to myself. But at some at some point, he said, hey, Zembos, you can I ask you a question? I'm like, yeah, sure, what's up? Why are you such a B-word? I'm like, 
where did this come Excuse come from? Excuse me. <laughs> yes, I was like, where did this come from? I'm being professional over here. Like, where's all this heat? And he's like, well, I'm being so. He's like, I'm being so nice and. Blah, blah, blah. He pulled the nice guy Reddit fiasco thing. I'm like, well, then you should probably stop being so nice since you're acting like this. And he's like, don't treat me like a kid. I was like, I'm not. You're acting like a toddler. <laughs> but no, the main problem with this guy is that I feel like he's clingy. Not to mention if there's a situation in the Telegram group, he'll try to act like admin and try to get everybody to shove and boss people around, which I do not like. So why I call him in VR chat, uh, let's just say I had to keep my distance. <laughs> but no, I blocked him on Discord and Telegram just because he is so over the top. And I feel like he can be a little egotistical as well. I'm not sure if I'm saying that word right. But yeah, that's one of the main instances that I had to cut someone off because they just don't really know how to act. And we just we met for like two weeks and you call me a B word. No, you don't do that. We're not we're not that close friends. I'm not sure if you're joking or not if you do that. It seems like someone who's pulling up. My lady. My lady. <laughs> Got a neck here going. My lady. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> One thing I see very often in VR chat, a lot of people think that because it's virtual reality that you can do whatever you want and be in people's face and stuff. I've noticed that over time, like, there's some things I really don't like in VR chat. And there was a person that I had to remove because I kept warning and telling this person to stop. But there was a person where every time I was having, like, a conversation with somebody, I would hear dog whimpering noises. And then I looked down and he's right there and he's like, Daddy, ah, please give me attention, like, all the time. And I'm like, I'm I'm having conversation right now. Can you wait, like, 30 seconds? And he kept on doing that. And... And I was literally about to remove him, and then something else happened, and then I had to remove him because of that. Guys, when you're in VR and stuff like that, in VR chat, for people out there listening, like, act the same way in VR that you would in real life. Don't, like, stand in between... <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> you're, getting all my, you're getting all my biz here. Hey. Hey, handsome. <laughs> Hey, like Jeff. Oh, hey. oh my god. <laughs> 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 hey. oh, See, I can do it because me and Stream are good friends. Yes, yes. <laughs> no, no, but in the most part, I really don't mind like people when do stuff like that. I think it's adorable. But when you're doing that, like four, five, six, every time I'm trying to have a conversation with somebody about something important and you interrupt me begging for my attention, can you just sit on the side and be, hey, stream, can I have you some of your time? Like, I, I would like to talk to you for 30 seconds for 30 seconds when you're done. Like, yeah, sure, no problem. You know, it's just ask, but don't intrude it in people's space and conversations. And usually that works out good. So, yeah. Yeah. It's not a feeling yeah. that people forget that we're not NPCs. Even though it's virtual reality, we're not NPCs. You know, there's another good aspect of that. Uh, going to public worlds and not dealing with, um, what's it called, the trolls that go in there. They get up in your face just because they want to. You the thing is just world? ignoring them. Plenty. I kind of have a question. I think we're going to drift off from the question, but I have, a, I have a question. What are you guys' number one personal boundaries when you're playing VR? Like, like what is the one thing people have to respect or you absolutely despise people when they do that to you? I'm curious, Zembos. I have to think about that question real fast because there's a camera right there. <laughs> oh my god. Actually, he's close um, to one of the questions. <laughs> oh, he's close well, to one of the questions. Oh, really? We can go ahead and answer it. Why not? <laughs> I say in here, uh, in virtual reality, since I'm in this type of avatar, I will say do not randomly touch me in places where you normally won't or sniff me or something. <laughs> there sniff are some weirdos me. out there. Oh my god. Sniff. <laughs> yes. There was the one time I visited a friend. He was in a public bro. This is why I say I stay in my safe space. And I just hear... <laughs> I turn around and someone by my tail. Oh my god. And I don't have 
for by tracking by a, I really almost did a donkey kick trying to take him off. I was like, oh wait, those birds are out. I can't do that. So I just moved to the other <laughs> side. <laughs> no, there are weirdos like that. I promise you. Yeah, yeah, no, trust me. Tell me. <laughs> I, nothing, nothing like it affects me in virtual reality. So it's just, just like nothing. Like if I touch you right now, I feel nothing. I mean, you may feel differently. You may have phantom touch, but I guess mine was just, just don't get in my face and start talking to me. Like I'm the only person there, and like all I can see is you. Is like back away, son, please. <laughs> See me, it's kind of weird. My my boundaries has changed over time. I used to be very very flexible, and all of a sudden, kind of it kind of narrowed down a little bit. Like me, like I know this is VR. You can clip through me. You can do whatever you want. It's like it's not physical, right? So I didn't really take offense to that. But I've noticed that over time, I don't like being nose boop for some reason. Head pads are fine. I'd rather you grab the side of my face than the top or the tip of my nose i do not care if you play with my pecs if you play with my belly if you play with my butt cheeks my junk or my tail i really don't mind that at all but the top of my head and my nose i don't like you can play with my towels though you can play with these like all day long if you want to like i really don't care uh i think it's, it's fun it's funny you know just be like <laughs> oh my god. You know, oh my god. I have this going on, so of course people are gonna play with it, so it's kind of an open invitation. But yeah, for the most part, I don't mind like the all the body except the nose and the top of the head. You can play with my ears, that's fine. You can get on, on my shoulders and kind of be sitting on my shoulders. That's fine. I think that's absolutely adorable. But for the most part, that's a two thing that kinda irritates me a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, Mumu, I'm curious, what about you? What about you in VR chat? I'm gonna include you in um, that question. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I, I, I have boobs. And I have more boobs than brains. Let's be honest. <laughs> I'm a little bit of a bimbo. <laughs> so, often enough, I get weird people in lobbies being like, "Oh my God, mommy, mommy," and I'm like, "Oh wow, oh, cringe." What? <laughs> what? Uh, oh my God. Hold up. No. Oh, stop that. Please don't miss. <laughs> it, it's, it's just uh. like, oh, why would you go up to someone and then just like refer to them like that? That's a little weird. A little weird, buddy. I mean, not gonna kink shame, but that's a little weird. <laughs> Little so, someone is someone is my kid. Yeah. Please tell me someone's never came up to you and said <laughs> mommy milkers. <laughs> okay, oh, listen, one of my you. nicknames with my friends is Moomy Milkers. Oh no. I mean friends are different. Oh, no. Friends are different. Oh my god. Friends are different. <laughs> Not random people. It is very different. Um but yeah, I just I get a lot of like the stereotypical like oh my god mommy like oh my god big boobs grab. And it's just like no. Maybe get to know me first. <laughs> Maybe buy me dinner. <laughs> <laughs> and then. <laughs> but yeah. Have you guys seen? Uh, I don't know if you've seen that girl on TikTok, but she dresses like uh, the evil stepsister in Shrek or something. Um, what's it yes. like? She's all in purple, and she like she dances and she does stuff, and her breasts move, and she can flex her pec muscle. I think that's super cool. Fun fact: <laughs> really I can also do that. I can oh, also really? flex, flex my boob muscles. Oh, I that can is also so do cool! That. <laughs> that's so cool. <laughs> Respect. Nah, I, I like that. I've been seeing too many bayonetta along with Lady. Dimitri's cosplay on TikTok? Let, let me... Uh, Lady Dimitri, oh, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. 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 <laughs> Alright. Stay updated with the Top Dogs podcast by subscribing to our YouTube channel and ringing that notification bell. Follow us on your favorite podcast platform. Hit that follow button to be notified for every new episode. Share the love by leaving us a quick rating. Connect with our community by joining our Discord server and Telegram community chat. And you'll find all the necessary links <laughs> in our link tree below. We appreciate your support. and We love you all. Hey, Top Dogs fan, if you're looking to snag some awesome perks while supporting us, explore our server subscription on Discord or Patreon. By becoming a podcast supporter, you'll get access to exclusive behind-the-scene footage, 
Join supporter meetups, express yourself with custom hand-drawn emojis featuring the Top Dogs team, and chat with the podcast team and fellow fans. Plus, we got the new After Dogs show for mature audiences at just $2.99 a month. Craving more? Upgrade to the Podcast Supporter Plus for $5.99 a month. Enjoy episode voting, supporter feedback, and be part of our live audience. Plus, unlock exclusive sneak peeks of upcoming ideas, merch drops, and much more in the future. There's no obligation to join the subscription, but your supporter genuinely makes a huge difference for our team. And for those who have already subscribed, a heartfelt thank you sincerely from the bottom of your heart. And uh, if you don't follow on our socials or Discord or Whiplash or YouTube, I think Whiplash has something to say concerning that. You see, you're going to learn about boundaries if you don't do that. You're going to learn about them the hard way, too. All of us. Not just me. I'll make streams <laughs> sit on you. <laughs> oh, no. That <laughs> sounds so dirty. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just gonna oh. bounce, just be like, just like belly flop. On them. <laughs> they might actually oh enjoy God. that. Some of them. More <laughs> like really, uh, with a good time. <laughs> I wish I had yeah, my crash I, I would have completely go to belly, belly flopped on the floor. <laughs> just blam. <laughs> Bam. Anyways, uh, wow. um, we do have comments from our viewers of our question of the week. And that is, how do you approach setting and communicating boundaries in your relationships? Um, we did hear from Roshi. Um, I'm sorry if I just butchered your name. Um, they said that I try my best to be transparent and communicate clearly with what I like and what I don't like. And I'm flexible um, with that. And I also make clear not to be set in my ways and be sure to make sure that no means no. If I ask someone to stop something, I want them to be respected, and I want to approach life in general with the golden rule. And we also heard from Justin. He said, I normally don't tell strangers, but only really close friends and family and such. But if they're curious or having a crush on me or something, I often tell them that I'm taken and such. I want to know what an interesting boundary is that you have seen others set but that you see and you admire from other people. Zemos, would you like to start? Um, sure. Um, uh, I would say it's interesting to me because I was still in my learning process of not being such a people pleaser. Uh, one person put as a boundary is to respect my time and space. It's not. It's pretty basic, but it's interesting because again, I'm trying to learn not to be such a people pleaser. So, basically, if you want to message him, you can't really message him in the middle of the night or anything. Or you can't be so clingy as to the story I told earlier. So, I actually kind of adapted that to my own boundary list. That way, set a, set a healthy boundary, set a healthy relationship boundary goal. Uh, yeah, I don't have any interesting boundaries to hide no on top of my head. <laughs> Sorry. To be fair, though, that's a very interesting, like, boundary. Honestly, that's a very respectable boundary, honestly. What I was just going to say was something even more, like, stupid. I was going to make a South Park joke, if you know what I'm talking about, stream. <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, uh, you remember it was, like, one of the first, like, earlier seasons, like, so Cartman said, respect my authority. Respect uh, my authority. <laughs> Yeah. I don't. I don't know. Oh damn! <laughs> damn! Never mind. You're the oldest person here too, and you don't know. Damn! <laughs> <laughs> I didn't watch a lot of TV when I was younger. I thought I did, but then I realized how many punchlines and stuff like that. I have no idea. Well, here's the thing: when I was younger and I was watching South Park, I was actually listening to the episodes in French. So probably that's why I can't recall some of the stuff you guys are saying. Ah, uh, that makes funny. sense. I'm gonna say I've heard that before too though what you said the most was like respect my personal space personal time to myself because there are some people and we know plenty of people I'm sure all of us know plenty of people who will message you at 1am in the morning and they'd be sober too absolutely 
I am dead ass well, asleep. I hear my phone go off. If I hear my fucking, uh, what do I have? My alarm sound for like everything. I have the stupid, um, Among Us sound still where you hit the alarm. And that crap is loud. <laughs> <laughs> that crap oh, is loud. Goodness. If I hear someone message me that early in the morning, I'm going to rage. <laughs> This is why you have the automatic do not disturb mode set at certain times so you don't get bothered. Because here's the thing, we hang on VR chat, we have friends all over the world and we don't exactly know everybody's time zone and some people are night owls, some people are early birds, you know, they're like, we all have different lifestyles, right? So it's kind of difficult. Like me, for the most part, what I don't like is when people, they're like, hey, How's it going? Like, they message me, and then I'm not answering within, like, five minutes, and then they got a mm -hmm. recall, and then they put question marks. I'm like, hey, man, I'm currently at work. I'm kind of busy. I'm going to answer you when I can, uh, but don't don't worry. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> no. Oh, no. Death. We can continue on. We'll just come back when stream gets back in here. So, okay, I'll say that again. Basically, there's some people, like, they expect you to message immediately when you get a message. And I'm like, hey, man, I am currently at work. I am busy at the moment. I will answer you as soon as I can. But don't you worry. I'm not forgetting about you. And I have to do that multiple times throughout the year. And usually people respect that and they understand. But I think what is the most irritating thing is like, hey, how's it going? How, how was your day? And then instead of writing, like, one paragraph... They put every line as a separate message. So my phone's going off. My work phone is going off. My computer is going off. My Apple Watch is driving me absolutely insane. So if you're going to ask me a question, just make one big paragraph and then I'll take the time to answer it. Um, but one of the boundaries, it's hard for me to think of like boundaries that other have said that I admire. But I think the one that I relate to the most is when people, they're like, no nose boop or no head pats and stuff like that. And at first I thought it was kind of odd, but as I played more than VR chat, I've realized that it kind of bothers me as well. So I think it's it's good when it's very clear. So I'm not sure how many cons you've been to, but at every con I go to, we know how furries can be, especially in fursuiters, right? Have you seen the fursuiters? I actually probably knew one myself, honestly, but it's says don't touch or don't hug randomly like there's a little sticker that says like don't hug don't uh, touch don't the badges <gasps> yeah, yeah those the badges. are cool i think those are great idea that's a great that's idea a very Years great ago. idea there's there's just some people who don't know the boundaries with fursuiters just because someone's wearing a cute suit doesn't mean you go up there and touch them you ask like ask to get a picture with them ask them for the hug just don't grab them especially don't like just grab their suits places because first suits are expensive yeah you don't have 5k to drop on your suit for them do you expensive expensive <laughs> no they're more expensive than that nowadays jesus christ yeah, oh, yeah. 5k guess, is just ooh. one head well, i'm glad i got yeah. mine for 5k when i did because god and they're like i think my same suitor now is like six and a half thousand seven thousand for a full body oh my gosh that is insane. I know personally. I never want to wear a fursuit, so I consider a VRC avatar my fursuit <laughs> at this point. Way cheaper, and I can customize it however I want. I mean, a lot of people honestly has resorted to using VR chat as instead, and a lot of people we use VR chat. And when you go to cons, there are those VR portals that you can see everybody, and it's, I think they're super cool. But I like the badges that mm. like dictate how you feel. How, like, oh, I'm in a party mood, I'm tired, I'm very social, my battery, my social battery is drained. I think that's a fantastic idea because it allows you, people to know exactly what mood you are without bothering you too much. And they know the boundaries of, like, dude, the badge was right here, it was saying it. Which brings up the fact that sometimes a lot of people, they have a lot of badges. So in their neck, there's a lot of visual clutter. So if for you, that badge that shows, like, how you feel and stuff, make sure that it's very easy to see. Uh, because people tend to be distracted by the whole overall picture. So either get that badge bigger or maybe reduce the amount so people can see you better. 
I've never really had issues in fursuit. Again, I don't fursuit that often, but for the most part, I've noticed people are pretty respectful. 99% of the time, they'll ask, hey, can I take a picture with you? Can I give you a hug? And it's it's super cool. Um, for the most part, just make yourself visible to the fursuiter before asking or doing anything. That way it avoids awkward situations. That's hmm. pretty much my part. So, you say that people have resorted to being VR chat avatars instead of fursuits. Now, I can understand if people would have the quests, but let's talk about me and you, stream. How much are our setups? Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay, okay, okay. I could have bought a fursuit at this point. You're absolutely right. I'm probably at six or seven thousand dollars. Okay, you're right. You're right. Yeah. I'm say, and I'm not even I'm talking here, about I, I, avatar commissions. Like, there's the physical gear in order for me to be in VR with face tracking, nine points of tracking, uh, top spec PC parts. You know, all the, the all mm -hmm. the you know all the pizzazz but the avatar commissions as well the retexture work the custom props the arms the everything yeah i probably had like eight thousand right now <laughs> but that's yeah, over a see. period of four years let's just say for like vr headset right now right index i got it when it first like came out like a year after it came out this was like eleven hundred dollars two new base stations so it's like three hundred dollars shipped Ugh, roll or fine roll down all right let's go <laughs> I want to feel sore. <laughs> I, d I don't mean That's to bring us up, but we do have some questions. <laughs> Miss Mommy can yell at us later. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyways, what is one of the more important boundaries that you have set for yourself? Whiplash, would you like to start? See, don't try to rush me into a relationship. That's like one of my main boundaries, honestly, because I have trauma. Oh my god, tracking. Not really trauma, but I have very big trust issues with dating people because of most of my relationships have not really ended well. So, and a lot of people, most of the times, will like, if someone likes me and they want to get into a relationship, they tell me they like me and they expect me to be like, oh, I like you back. Let's go have fun together. Let's go in a relationship, fun day together. It's like, that's not how that works for me. It's like me, I'm someone like I've dated someone online before and I met them and the connection just wasn't there. I'm someone who has to meet someone personally first and actually get to know them before I'm just like concrete on that. But now since I've had multiple trust issues with just people, it's like I have to know you for a long time now at this point and I have to know you personally and know you in person. It's like I cannot. But my boundaries is just don't rush me into something that I am not ready for. Because all that's going to make me do is fade away from you. Or like push myself away from you because you're just making it uncomfortable for me. And I'm not like that. I would say the personal boundary I have for myself is to not overindulge whether it's work or a person if it's not giving back. Because in a sense, if I'm putting in like well, 75% or 100% into a friendship, and I'm just getting back 20%, then what's the point of having the friendship? I mean, I, I like you, want to be a friend, but if you're not giving back, then there's no point. That goes same thing with my work too. Like, I love my work, but I try not to overdo it so I don't burn myself out too early because my work, whether it's content creation or TikTok editing, that's one of the passions I'm trying to grow. So I make sure not to overindulge myself and make sure I, you know, keep a steady pace. I absolutely agree with you. I think it's good, like, you bring up the friendship. Like, if you, like, we've done a, I, we, we, there was a TikTok short concerning that, but, like, if you care about your friends, you know, you shouldn't count, like, the money or how much they've given to you, but you should somewhat give back to them, you know, if you care about your friend, if they're doing stuff for you, I think you should do stuff for them as well. You know, so it has to be, it doesn't have to be a perfect balance, but when it's 20 and the other one does 100, it's not really fair, and I agree with you. Um, me, personally, I 
I, 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 for some reason, I always want to help out people. And I've been like this since I was a, a child. I would give my coat to somebody freezing in winter so that they feel better. And I do that a lot. And that's probably where the whole dad thing come with me. It's because I, I care about people. I want to help out. We live in a tough world sometime, and I want to help as much as I can. But sadly, the reality of thing is some people don't want to help themselves out. And I have burned myself out over people that, you know, I try to help and they're not listening. And then the thing is not working. So they come back to me crying, stream, uh, this is happening. I'm like, did you do this? Like, no, I didn't do it. I'm like, okay, you need to do this and do that. And if you don't know how to handle this situation before responding, come to me and I'll tell you what to do. And you know what? They don't take my help. They don't take my advice. And then they burn themselves out. And I'm like, you know what? Like, this is the last time I'm going to help you. This is where I, I've realized that I need to set boundaries. And then that's why I give them three chances after that, because it's more involved emotionally for me. That's why I give three chances. But if at the third chance you come up to me, I'm like, look, this is the last time I'm giving you advice. Listen to me. I guarantee it's going to work. And they don't do it. I'm like, that's it. I'm done. And that person that was breaking my personal space in VR that I had to block, this was one of the person that kept begging for help and begging and begging. And he didn't listen. So I had to set up a boundary at some point, and it, it really sucks, and I blocked him for a little while so that he would stop messaging me. I'm going to unblock him, up, of course, because I don't want to break channels of communication. But at some point, it's just like I'm losing myself in this process. And I know my advice work for the most part. I always say, you know, this is what I would do. Feel free to improvise, but that's the general idea. And every time I've given those advices to people for those specific cases, it has worked. Or either it worked for them or I've been through the process and it worked. So at one point, I just draw the line and that is it. True. Very true. Mm. I would yeah, honestly that's... another thing I should have talked about too. Uh, helping people that you care about too many people and then you just burn yourself out. I mean, it's like... Why even try? That being said, what is the most important and most vital piece of advice that you would give someone about setting that boundary? But Flash, just like any any boundary, or just like a boundary you're setting up for someone to respect you. The most important way to set a boundary. Oh. I say most important way to set up a boundary would just like if someone I would like I was saying before if someone is accidentally doing it just talk with them about it don't like go aggressively to them and be like why you do this you know I don't like this and they probably don't even know that you you don't like what they particularly did just pull them to the side or not pull them to the side but just like later on or maybe next day just call them just say like hey whatever you did that for this is what you did yesterday I'm not really a fan of it, and it kind of bothered me some. And if they respect you, and if you're actually really good friends with you, and they want to stay your friend, then they respect that boundary that you put down. And that's usually a good way to actually continue a good friendship, is respecting each other's boundaries. And that would be the best way for me, personally, to set that boundary, is just do it softly, don't do it aggressively, just do it as a friend. And not someone who's a stranger, because usually they come off differently on both spectrums. I'm going to throw the ball at Zembos for this one, because I have, I think my answer is going to be a bit lengthy. I'm going to try to make it short. <laughs> I'll, I'll try my mind short then. I will say, when setting a boundary, make sure you're very, very thorough of setting that boundary with someone and tell them how it makes you feel, why that boundary is there, so far and so forth. If if there's anyone that hasn't said about it yet, please do, because no one should be taking advantage of whether it's physically, emotionally, mentally, or financially. And for those that are listening that like to push boundaries, don't do it. Don't do it. It's not going to end good. It's not going to end good. But yeah, early set the boundaries, don't push them. Yee. Yeah. I think the most important thing when you're setting boundaries is never try to address the situation when your emotions are through the roof when you're coming up on your high horses like you're angry nobody likes it when somebody like completely bursts out and starts screaming in the middle of other people it makes the whole situation awkward it makes the situation weird for you and you might not be able to express yourself as clearly as once you're more calm 
and your MOs in a more um, uh, stable mindset. So if something is really getting you out of your comfort zone or getting you really mad or upset, remove yourself from the situation. If you're in VR, take your headset off and just drop it on the floor and just take a few steps, okay? There's no point in trying to set your boundaries when your your emotion are spiking. It won't work as efficiently as if you sat down and like, look, did you notice when I, I took my took my headset off and I walked away? I didn't appreciate what you said back then, and I would appreciate you not doing that again. I don't want this to happen. I didn't like the mindset I was in, and I want our friendship to work. So if you end up on a positive note, usually it works well. Uh, and if you know somebody is very sensitive, one compliment, one fault, one compliment. If you follow that structure, usually if somebody you know is very sensitive to criticism, This is a really good approach. Like, hey, I enjoy spending time with you. But when you do this, I really don't like that. Could you do this instead? That would make me very happy. So positive, negative, positive. Usually, it will fly under the radar and it would be like a hot knife through butter. Everything will go super well and the message will get across well. Probably use the wrong expressions here. <laughs> God. But uh, yeah, you get my point. <laughs> I would also mm -hmm. like to add to that. Personally, when I set a boundary, I like to stew on it maybe like a night for a couple days. And I completely think through my thoughts before I actually go about setting it. And often enough, like if I have someone overstep a boundary or whatever, whether it's my partners or, you know, one of my roommates or my friends, what I like to do is personally... Often enough, I'll be like, hey, you know, can we go hang out, do something casual, do something fun? Maybe we're just going on a night drive. Maybe we're going to like the 7-Eleven down the road, you know, getting snacks and drinks and just hanging out and driving around, listening to music and bringing up what I need to casually. I feel like that helps a lot. Because often enough, when you're setting a boundary, if you're doing it just like one to one, And there's like, you're not doing anything really together. You're just talking directly. It can be a little bit like anxiety inducing. It can make people anxious and it can make people think honestly the worst. So I like to set my boundaries in, in a very firm but casual way. So we're both comfortable and we both can talk about how things made us feel without worrying that we're going to upset the other. You know, I think car rides are a very good thing for relationship and couples because you can't really escape the situation. You have to talk about it. And usually car rides, they can be fun. You put some music. It's good. I think it's a fantastic yeah, it's idea, therapeutic. fantastic way to do it. Yeah, it is. Absolutely. And, you know, sometimes people struggle to voice, you know, their concerns or their, you know, what they want to say. So sometimes texting is a good way, too. Sometimes me, when a situation arises between me and my husband, sometimes verbally it does not work. So when we realize that we're both upset at each each other we we have to recognize that this is not working so we usually step down and after an hour i'm like sometimes we either reinitiate the conversation and then we're in a better mindset we feel we're calm and relaxed we're able to resolve the situation or sometimes we text to each other hey i'm really sorry i did this to you i had no idea i care about you i love you i'm sorry and usually it works really well so When resolution doesn't work, sometimes just sometimes it's both parties are mad at each other. So sometimes it's acknowledge that both of you are angry and just stepping down and taking a break for an hour or two and then come back and try again. Situations shouldn't take too long to resolve usually after that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, any last thoughts? Respect people's boundaries. I'm <laughs> square. Yeah. And if you're unsure of a boundary, make sure that you bring it up and you ask people because sometimes boundaries just kind of pop up and sometimes people just don't know what they want at first so always make sure to ask absolutely you're absolutely right it's it's not always you know obvious so communication mm -hmm. ask if you're not sure 
that you've offended somebody or not. There's nothing wrong in going to them like, hey, I did this. Did, did that hurt you? Sometimes they say like, yeah, but it's okay. But, you know, it's a good thing because you're actually showing that person that you care about them. That's really good. That's like plus plus in The Sims for, for friendship points. It's really good. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> Oh yeah. All right then. I think that sums it up. So uh thank you guys for coming. I hope this episode was very insightful and you learned a little something. So, you know, make sure you guys you take care of yourself, take care of your friends and uh you know, set your boundaries, make them clear, respect yourself in the process and have fun, you know. And uh so yeah. <laughs> so I have uh, I hope you guys have a fantastic day, a fantastic night and uh enjoy life. Make the most out of it. Have a good night. Bye bye. Be safe, stay this. <laughs> good night. Good night. Bye bye. Bye bye. Oh my God, Skuru has a terrible influence on me. <laughs> I'm stuck to do like him. It's so cute though. <sighs> oh my stomach. Uh, <laughs> so I'm being nice. <laughs> <laughs> Your bowels be like.